Be brave. Carl, Carl is a script objection king. So you, you want to be that as well. Scripts number six, I should hurry on. Number seven, professional cover. Have one made. Buyer's presentation, listing presentation, CMA, anything. If you come up with something that's congruent with your brand and your marketing, it, again, everything we're talking about is at the listing presentation. How do you separate yourself from the crowd? As soon as you have a professional cover, I don't care if all you put in it is the property profile and the CMA, it still looks so much better than these agents that I see in, in my market. I still see it time and time again. They come with a folder with a company name on it, and they think because it's a pretty shiny cover that it's a real professional look. You want to brand you. Come up with something, please. Okay? It's inexpensive. Okay, we've all heard the, that old line about selling isn't telling. When you're here this week, anytime you hear a great question or even a great one-liner, please write it down. Please start collecting them. I love, sorry. Not my glasses. I love questions, and these are some that I've collected since I've been hanging out with Tom. I'm only going to go through a few, but you'll get the point. What's the best case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? What's the most likely scenario? How often do you want me to contact you? Would you prefer to get updates via email, or is it okay if I call? How quickly do you want me to have an offer in front of you? Are you more nervous or excited about getting the house listed? Are you ready to sign the contract? Would you like to take a minute to review the unique items um, that are in my marketing plan that only my team does? How quickly would you like to be in escrow? How quickly do you want to be reviewing an offer? Here's the value in you taking the time to create your own questions, though I will share all of mine with you, is that when you prep by reading questions as part of your process, you're not nervous. You go in there and you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about the questions you're going to ask your prospect and what their answers are going to be. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, business cards. Back to real old school and basic. Um, I actually have all of these business cards, most of which I've collected at events like this. My assistant has scanned them. They're on an Excel spreadsheet. I can pull out my iPad and just you know, take my finger and go through them. But if, if you don't do that, or you're meeting with someone that's 70 or 80 or 90, it's a nice visual. When you're talking about networking, you know, when I talk about how I come to events like this four times a year to meet amazing people like you, I get your business cards. I put you in my database. We network. We give each other referrals. In your own language, when you're sharing that with your client, it's kind of cool to have a few thousand of them to kind of plump down on the table. Okay? We as salespeople, I believe too often are telling our clients what we do. Oh, I'm going to put this up, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I can do great professional photos. But you don't bring them the materials to show them what you're doing. You're just doing this. Okay? So I'm encouraging you to show them. I, I have a listening presentation on my iPad. I use it. You know, it's, you have to know you have to know your market. That older lady, Mrs. Bowers, who's just a sweetheart, when I met with her, when we listed her house, she was 94 years old. I brought over the iPad and just holding it made her nervous. <laughs> like, no, no, here, she gave it to her daughter. So gotta know your audience. Okay. Make sure that you bring samples of your marketing material. I'm really big on you in any way you can, leveraging your past successes. So I just recently um, got a great new coaching client, Ruth, who is new to the market she's in, but she was a top producing you know, power broker agent. So one of the things that we're gonna work on is taking her old successes and leveraging them in this new market. So I love this. This is some of our marketing material. And again, a lot of it will be online, but I, I just like this. I like being able to hand it to them and show this to them. And back to Christoph's point, when Gary Vaynerchuk was with us, one of the terms he and Tom talked about a lot was social proof. 
Just listings, just sold, and testimonials are about the best social proof you're going to get. So if you've already done some deals and closed them, you have, you have potential testimonials there. You just have to ask for them. So that was marketing material. Questionnaires for sellers to fill out. Again, our markets are all different. Our MLSs are different. I would give the office the questionnaire that uh, my partner designed. But we have a questionnaire that we hand to the client very, very early on in the process, like maybe during the video or right afterwards when we sit down. And what it is is when you load a property on the MLS, you have, it asks you all those questions and you have to put in information. We've transcribed those questions, so I recommend you do it for your own MLS. All of those questions into a document we've saved. We put their name, their address, and other contact information that we're requesting at the top, and we hand it to them, and we ask them to fill it out. You can each design your own perfect listing presentation for you. You're going to have those variables depending on the personality. For me, I love doing that very early on in the process. Because whether I'm right or not, I've convinced myself that the moment that you have physically and intellectually engaged the prospect, it's another step in an assumptive close. So if they're writing on this, on this questionnaire telling you, oh, we'll put the air conditioning in three years ago and the roof is five years old, et cetera, et cetera, this is what you're doing. You're just reeling them in. One item after another, you're just reeling them in. So the questionnaire will be on there. That's one cool thing about, well, one of the many cool things about the iPad. I wouldn't be flipping through these pages like this. Okay, how many of you, if, if you would please by a show of hands, how many of you are registered on Zillow? Okay, wrong question. How many of you are not registered on Zillow? Okay, I want to make sure that those of you that are not know that you can be registered on Zillow and this is how much it costs. Zero. So there's absolutely no reason, if you're in the United States, not to be registered on Zillow. It's free. They send you free listing reports on all of your active listings. And um, you can have your clients start putting reviews on there. I probably did that for a year, year and a half, before I started paying Zillow anything. Okay? The beauty in that is when you get that report, that's one more thing that you can show your client once you have the listing, or when you're showing it to them as, oh, this is what I'm going to do for you, is you give them those Zillow, Zillow reports. So it's one more piece of technology where you're saying, oh, on my listings, I had one recently where I showed them we had, I don't know, 24,000 views or something. And you put that in front of a prospect, it's like, wow, how'd you do that? Well, how I did it was thank you, Zillow. You know, because, again, free. So along those lines, so that's one of the things that we provide to our client in our weekly marketing update. I show my prospect at the listing appointment a sample of our weekly marketing update. So we give them the reviews on Zillow, uh, price changes, status changing in the market, status of properties in the market. It's an update. But again, I can tell them that I do that. But I, I've noticed that there's a lot of agents that tell their clients they do something and never do it. So I like at the listing presentation to show them a sample. That's one of those times when I ask them, do you want to talk once a week? Do you want me to email you? Do you want me to text you? What are your top, we have like, I, have, I have four or five things and I ask them, what are their top two favorite ways to communicate? And I tell them, but by the way, the moment I have an offer, I'm gonna track you down. So regardless of what your favorite is, it goes out the window. Again, assumptive. Oh, I'm out. One, with my last minute, I'm gonna take one last minute and tell you guys a personal story, which is probably when I'm gonna get really nervous. Um, about four or five years ago, I don't know if any of you were in the summit five years ago or so, Tom introduced us to a friend of his named Tony Robbins. Great speaker, it was really cool to hear him. And I recently, you know, five years later, went to one of his events. Did, has everybody heard of Tony Robbins? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I went to one of his events. It's the one where you walk on 1,200 degree coals. 